finger yeah. and then lick this one. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, but yeah. <laughs> you can't tell anything from tasting. <laughs> <laughs> While I wash my mouth out, Dougal and the rest of the team are setting off to find one of the clues to why this is the hottest place on Earth. Apparently, it's all to do with why these salt pans came to be here in the first place. We're driving across one of the lowest places on planet Earth, 120 meters below sea level. So low, in fact, that when sea levels were higher tens of thousands of years ago, this was all ocean. And some of the salt we see today results from evaporation when those oceans dried up. But the main reason is what lies beneath us, a huge volcanic engine drawing salty groundwater from the nearby Red Sea and pushing it through the surface layer. And the most incredible thing is that Dougal finds the volcanic engine is still running. Believe it or not, this shallow mound behind me is the world's lowest subaerial volcano. And it's very few geologists get the opportunity to see this in the flesh. So I'm really excited. First evidence we're going to see of the dramatic situation happening beneath our feet. As Dougal's team reach the edge of the crater, it's clear this is no ordinary volcano. Like the surface of an alien planet, Dalol is crowded with ridges and towers of crystals and pockmarked with hissing gas vents and pools of concentrated acid. Our scientists will need to treat this place with respect. Very, very quick safety brief, and it's pretty important about where we're going. You've got to follow the AFR guide. See for here, he comes here quite regularly. It was up a couple of, I don't know, say a year or so ago. He stepped on what he thought was a fairly solid surface, went straight through, and this was the effect. So, when Dougal sets off to explore the volcano system, he takes trip Dr. Muckle with him. What kind of acids would you have? Well, primarily you're looking at sulfuric acid because yes. you can see by the yellows. I mean, just behind us here, these these lovely bright yellow and orange colours. There's yep. lots of sulphur crystals in yeah. here, and one of the major gases that you get off the volcanic rocks yeah. is SO2, okay. sulphur dioxide. So clearly, these sulphur springs are evidence that the the hydrothermal system is still active. So oh. at depth, there must be hot boiling magma, which is which is driving this salt engine factory. Yeah. yeah. Dougal's mission here is to find evidence of how active the fault system is beneath the Dalol salt flats. So he's testing the acidity of the pools with a pH meter. Let's see if we can get a reading from it. The more acidic they are, the higher the influence of the magma below. You know, it's off the scale, absolutely off the scale. Oh. It won't read the pH because the pH is so extreme. A few years ago, these acid pools were tested and had a pH of 2. Now, they've hit zero, about as acidic as it's possible to get. It means that the magma is highly active and could erupt again soon. For Dougal, it's more evidence that this whole part of Africa is getting more volcanic as the Earth's crust splits apart. The Earth's crust here is really, really thin. It's really, really thin because beneath my feet, we're at the boundary between three major structures in the Earth's crust. And these structures are literally tearing themselves apart. And when it tears itself apart, it gives it cracks and structures which molten magma can work its way through to the Earth's surface as volcanoes. So as it sinks further into the volcanic underworld, the hottest place on Earth is only going to get hotter.
Well, this is it. We're leaving Dalol. Um, as you can see, all the vehicles are being packed up and uh, suddenly we're not going to be on foot anymore. We're going to be in these trucks heading south to what is going to be our base camp now for the next few weeks. Our destination is the village of Kusrawat. The journey should take four hours if nothing goes wrong. And that's a big if, because we're heading out across some of the most rugged, hostile terrain in this part of the world. And that's saying something. We have a stop vehicle, we have a stop vehicle, all vehicles stop now, thank you. It's too hot to be doing this. I'm being to see the wisdom of using camels in this terrain. Camels don't have uh, alternators, wheels that get stuck. They don't need power steering. They don't need power no. steering or pulling out by a road. Well, this is becoming a bit of a chore now. We've, uh, we've been going for nearly, well, two, two and a half hours. We've made probably about I'd say five kilometers, maybe six kilometers. It's not going particularly well. But it'll be worth it because we'll finally get to meet the people who live out here permanently, the Afar communities of the Danakil Depression. I'm incredibly excited because this is why I'm here, to work with and learn from these unique people, to discover how they survive from day to day. By the time we get to the village, it's dark, and we have no idea what kind of place we'll be calling home for the next few weeks, or what kind of reception we're going to get. Hello. Hi. Will you say, uh, from all of us, this is uh, very special for us and to say a huge thank you for allowing us to come and stay in their on their land and with them we make contradiction to you and we love you okay we are glad to meet you we are love you Excellent. Thank, thank you, you very much thank you very much so we needn't have worried. Not only do they love us, they've even laid on some traditional dancing. And though it's meant to be just for the men, I'm so glad to be here, there's nothing going to keep me off that dance floor. I have to jump! Follow this! Hang on, see! Hang up! Oh, my goodness, I've scored and I've only been here ten minutes! When you really feel like I'm in Ethiopia, I'm with, um, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna find out about these people. I feel like you feel like you, you really are being kind of welcomed into this big extended family, and it's, it suddenly feels after the walk and everything that we've, we have really arrived. It's 5 a.m. and the start of our first day living with the Afar people in Kusarat. This is really going to be our first time that we can kind of understand how the Afar live day to day in this incredibly harsh environment. I'll be living with the women, while Steve and team biologist Richard will spend the day with the village chief. Assalamualaikum. Richard. Richard Ngali. Huh? I'm Steve. I'm Steve, yeah, Richard. My name is Gilsa. 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 The 